Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Yes, we're filming in a new location. We've got beautiful nature. We've got my giraffe pal right over there. And we've got a sponsor spot for today, which is our merch, my friends. Have you seen our fantastic clothing designs? Press F to pay respects. Look at this thing. It's amazing. I love it so much. We also have amazing other designs that you can check out at our Teespring campaign at the link in the video description. It'll be good for you. Just go buy new clothes, all right? Doesn't have any UFD branding, just solid tech stuff. And there's a gator, because just there's a UFD tech gator. All right, suck it up and deal with it. And let's go ahead and talk about today's title topic, which, you know, sounds like clickbait, but AMD is the one who's propagating the news themselves, especially when it comes to competing with Intel. In case you're not familiar, AMD recently signed a contract to launch the world's fastest supercomputer using only CPUs. It's known as Archer 2 and is going to have 748,544 Zen 2 cores, which is quite a big deal. And apparently one of the ways that they're hitting all of these big contracts for these supercomputers is, at least according to this slide, their pitch when comparing themselves to Intel's Xeon lineup, which is showing that it's at least 5.6 times better performance per value than Intel actually is. And in this slide specifically, looking at their Spec Crate 2017 integer performance, they not only perform better than Intel with 32 cores, they also cost a substantial amount less. You can see it comes out to $3,400 compared to the best competing Intel equivalent, which is $17,900, which is a 5.6 times better performance per dollar or roughly 460% more performance per dollar, which is crazy. AMD is just slapping out those numbers and it definitely has been going well for them because they have been landing those supercomputer contracts left and right, as I previously mentioned. And it does seem like it's getting into Intel's jimmies a little bit because as we know, they recently launched their Cascade Lake X lineup and basically have their pricing from the previous generation, which is exactly what they're gonna need to do to compete with AMD moving forward. Even if it hasn't trickled down to us lowly mainstream consumers yet, they haven't uh, drop the price on the 9900KS, but hopefully one day we can we can presume that Comet Lake, which is supposed to be the next generation of 14 nanometers that's coming out to us, can be lower price, maybe, please, Intel, I beg of you. But in case you're okay with AMD continuing to dominate Intel in the desktop computer space, well, they have at least set themselves up for success because while we're currently enjoying the thrills that are Zen 2 processors, they have already begun working on Zen 5. Yes, they're already iterating on the fifth generation of Zen processing with Zen 3 already being complete. That's what we're supposed to be getting in 2021. Current rumors floating out there indicate it's about an 8% IPC improvement, but they're already in progress on 4 and the team that apparently worked on Zen 3 has then leapfrog four and is now working on five. So they're actually working on two generations simultaneously, which is actually how they got some of the performance into Zen 2. It was actually supposed to be in Zen 3, but because the Zen 3 team finished up quickly, they were able to implement some of the features that were supposed to be next generation into the current generation, which is how AMD is continuing to get ahead pretty good in that, that stuff. But you know who's not getting ahead? And I just have to pause here to talk about this. Sony's PlayStation 5 dev kit. It's real. There's a dang picture of it. Has six USB ports on the front and it looks like a freaking dumb spaceship from the middle of nowhere. And this is why Area 51 is on lockdown because this thing is floating around in there and nobody needs to. This was obviously leaked as a render a while ago by Let's Go Digital. That's, is that who it is? Let's Go Digital released the render of it and now we have official pictures of it being a horrible, horrible mess. Obviously, this is just the dev kit. They're cooling the Zen 2 CPU and the Navi graphics with that stacked design right there. This is not how the retail version is gonna ship, but I, I mean, that's a good thing. 
it, it, it should not ship like that. I slotted the PS5 news in there because it's technically AMD, because it's using AMD hardware, but we still got more AMD stuff, which is there is a leaked benchmark of the 16 core 3950X CPU showing off to be about 14% faster in single core performance than the previous 16 core 2950X that was a Threadripper chip. It's about 14% faster in single core, but about 4% faster in multi-core, which makes sense because it has a high boost clock, but that only works on one core. This multi-core still very decent, but just not exactly what you need in order to get all of that done. And with all the talk about Threadripper, in case you missed it, we actually talked about the release dates and everything in a previous episode of Hot News. Well, there's another motherboard leak from Gigabyte this time showing off a little tease peek of their upcoming TRX40 motherboard, which is going to support the third generation of Threadripper chips. It looks gorgeous, at least in the little slight picture that I can see. I want it, Reese. Buy it for me, please. No. Okay. Well, you know what else I want you to buy for me, Reese? Intel's new GPUs, which according to a DigiTimes article is saying that it's supposed to be coming out in the middle of 2020. This corroborates the image that Raja Kadori posted to Twitter last week, which has his Tesla Model X showing June 2020, Project Z. It makes sense because that's around the time of Computex. This is just kind of a continuation of that. But you know what is a continuation of Intel's failures? the CPU shortage that's been going around. Yes, my friends, apparently Intel said that the CPU shortage should have been done by the second half of 2019. Well, you know, we're kind of in the last quarter of 2019, just about, and it's still not actually done. Tom's Hardware went out and talked to a few different OEMs to try to figure out what's going on there. Lenovo, HP, all having to say negative things about the CPU shortage that's going on. Lenovo even saying that the market only grew about 4% last quarter, when and realistically, it could have grown seven to eight percent, but because Intel couldn't supply the 14 nanometer CPUs that they needed, they were hindered in growth. Intel responded to this Tom's Hardware article by saying that they're investing in their supply. Okay, we've added a billion dollars in capital to achieve more capacity and flexible display. D -d -d supply? How how dare you? We increased our 14 nanometer capacity by 25 percent while also ramping 10 nanometer production. We improved our supply every quarter. How dare you? I, I'm adding the how dare you's, but uh, you know, Intel not necessarily keeping up with wherever they should be. They're not moving f towards the future. Therefore, they're stagnating in the present, just like my life. Actually, no, my life's fine. It's just like Reese's life. That's fair. <laughs> And then in case you want super fast memory for all of these CPUs that we're talking about, G-Skill announces a brand new kit, DDR4, 4,000 megahertz, but with a cast latency of 15. Low latency, fast speed RAM, 32 gigabyte kit. Good job, G-Skill. Speaking of good job, Zygma Tech, good job on rebranding an OEM case that everybody's gonna be having lately. This is one of the reasons why I don't necessarily endorse brands like Cougar here locally in South Africa because they're just a rebadge of OEM suppliers. And that's what this new Zygma Tech Zeus Spectrum Edition open tower chassis proves. It's the Cougar Conquer case. You guys are nothing special, just an OEM rebadge. It's gorgeous, don't get me wrong, but I'm gonna move on into something that is special which is Los Angeles Fire Department is trying to double its drone capacity in order to better fight fires in the Los Angeles County region. They currently have a set of 11 drones that they use to scout out remote areas to make sure that they can access them safely. The next set of drones that they wanna get would be used for more specialized resources, such as crews that deal with hazardous materials, urban search and rescue, and swift water rescues. And each of the drone pilots that the LAFD uses has to have 80 hours of training which is quite a lot. Hopefully they can get the drones and start flying them into each other, causing fires themselves. I don't know, that's the world I wanna live in, where the fire department is the cause of the fire. I love it. <laughs> and then they blame everybody else. Only you can prevent forest fires. Meanwhile, they're there with flamethrowing drones, creating their own jobs capitalism. And then if you needed any more excuse to turn on dark mode on your phone, whether it's iOS 13 or with Android 10, a new video out by PhoneBuff shows a robotic test where he had the phones engage in automated activities. One phone with uh, light mode on, one phone with dark mode on. And what they found is that by the time that 
iPhone XS, which had light mode on, was dead. The dark mode iPhone XS had 30% battery remaining, which is quite fantastic and just kind of shows that not only is dark mode good and beautiful, it's also good for your battery. Even if it might cause a little bit extra eye strain, do you really need your eyes when you're 75? I don't think so. Okay, you can be blind and driving. It's a thing in the future at least because cars are gonna drive themselves. Future's a great place, except for when things can't keep up with other things, which is the next article in a good segue. Mind you, that was amazing. The Pixel 4 is limited to 4K 30 FPS recording on its rear camera, while the other phones like the iPhone 11 can record 4K 60 no problem. And when Google was asked about this, they said, hey, okay, you know what? Most people only record in 1080p, all right? So shut up there. And then secondly, did you know it would cost half a gigabyte for every minute of storage of 4K 60? And by golly, we just don't have storage fast enough. Mm -mm. Well, maybe that's because you're not using UFS 3.1 like every other flagship that's out there. And secondly, maybe you could actually realize what a lot of people want in a flagship device. It'd be one thing if the Pixel 3a didn't record in 4K 60. In fact, it doesn't, so that's not necessarily a problem. But when the phone only comes in at $400, sure thing. When a phone is going to cost me $900, give me the best, okay? Yes, I don't care if it takes half a gigabyte for every minute of storage. Make it so that my phone can do that and then give me the option, Google. Stop this crap. Also, stop the crap where the Pixel 4's face unlock works when my eyes are closed. I don't like that. I don't want my children unlocking my phone and then taking pictures of me sleeping. That's the best case scenario I have of that being used. Or the police using it on me when I'm passed out in the alley from all the nights of lack of sleep I got. I've got no good scenario where I'm asleep and people are using the phone. But apparently Google is promising that they are going to update it so that your eyes have to actually be open and you have to be conscious in order to use this. This was a default thing on the iPhone 10 when this came out. I don't, I don't understand how Google did not have this implemented. And in fact, if you just search the word eyes on your Pixel 3, you'll find that there is open eyes looking at screen option for this, but it's not enabled, it's not there. And Google's workaround for it is require a passcode. That defeats the whole freaking point, Google. And this next thing is gonna defeat the point of some hearing implants because scientists are working on a next gen hearing implant that actually goes on your brain and is made of platinum and uses kirigami paper cutting techniques to make the metal malleable enough to actually go on a person's brain in order to make it so that they can hear again. And this could combat not only just regular hearing uh, loss, which typical cochlear implants can deal with, but also inner ear hearing loss, which is not currently uh, available to uh, cure with hearing implants and they've already done successful tests on lab mice but no human trials have started yet but it has a lot of promise get that flexible cure gummy metal on your brain my friends do it and you know what else you should do you should drive somebody else's mercedes benz oh yeah that's what's happening if you have a mercedes benz app that people use to remotely locate unlock and start their cars well it turns out that there is a glitch in the matrix and you can unlock and start other people's Mercedes that are in the area, not only displaying their car to you, but also the name and VIN number and all of the details about their car on your phone. It's fantastic. Imagine if Tesla did that, people would be flipping out. But no, just Mercedes, okay? You know, they're a well-established car brand. Who cares if they have some software issues? But damn it, a Tesla autopilot killed somebody? Well, that's ridiculous. Mm -mm. I don't care how many other people are killing other people on the cars. Millions of people dying every year. No, 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 no. A robot killed one. Gotta shut the whole thing down. It's over. You know what we need to shut down? Apple's use of the word pro because it looks like the 16 inch MacBook Pro has been referenced in Mac OS's Catalina beta showing off the image of the MacBook Pro 16, which is just slightly bigger than the MacBook Pro 15. And I swear to high heavens, if this thing does not have any sort of SD card reader or card reader at all, it is not a pro device and you can shove it up your sweet cash bottom, Apple. Speaking of shoving things up a sweet cash bottom, why don't you check out 
our merch designs so I can have a sweet cash bottom to bring us to the United States because my wife and son are already over there seeking medical treatment for his rare genetic disorder, picking up something like Press F to pay respects, our uh, hot floppy, our Mobo Diamond, any of the tech uh, shirts that we have would be amazing. Links in the video description for that. And I'm going to bounce my sweet cash butt out of here. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Hot News. I will see you in the next one. You enjoy your day, my friends. Okay? You enjoy it. Especially you. Not you, Reese. I don't care that it's your birthday. <laughs>